automatic headlights has been a feature that's been around for quite a while now and it's quite a handy little thing to have to have your lights automatically turn on when it's night time it also conveniently stops you from getting a flat battery on your car and that has to be a good thing um, but it really bugs me that this is not a standard feature that manufacturers almost always have as, as an optional extra and it's something that they can easily add because it costs almost nothing to make. I've built little sensors like this before. And um, I don't even think on this Vauxhall Tigra there is an option on the light switch to do this. Um, but uh, we'll attempt to make our own version. And I think uh, we'll have to add a separate little switch for the auto function. But it's completely doable and um, I'll share with you how I did it. And then you can try and make your own. This will probably work on various Vauxhall models. Uh, it took a bit of investigation to figure out which wires turn on uh, the lights, but uh, I've worked it out and I've got a simple little circuit that I've designed and uh, I'll show you how that works as well. So at the heart of, um, of my little circuit is a standard NE555 timer chip. Um, and the reason I've used an NE555 NE timer uh, not because of its timing function, but because its output can directly drive a relay. So it can source and sync quite a bit of current. So you don't need a transistor to um, to drive the relay directly. And um, the other reason is you can configure it to work as a Schmidt trigger so that there's a threshold uh, where it's it activates and then it needs to change quite a bit the other direction before it deactivates so you don't get any false triggers so there's a bit of hysteresis there and um, it's simply the input for that is a LDR a light dependent resistor so the more light that falls on top of this resistor the more it resistance decreases and then on the input it uh, it will pull it close to ground which means the output state will change and it would drive this relay here uh, this um, uh, a potentiometer here will adjust the sensitivity of the circuit and um, you didn't need to do this with a 555 you could do it with just a transistor but um, it's that hysteresis which I want I don't want my lights to come on and off periodically once it triggers it needs to be quite a bit brighter again for for the lights to turn um, off again that way you you stop it from constantly turning on off on off and uh, another little quirk that I have as well, if you've noticed that the output pin 3 of the 555, I've actually connected it to the discharge pin, pin 7. Now that seems completely crazy to do, and normally you would never do this, but uh, it just so turns in, in this configuration where I'm not actually running it as a timer or um, an oscillator. Uh, the When it sinks to ground, uh, both these transistors are more or less in the same position, so it kind of doubles up on the output transistors. It's not really necessary, it's just something I've done for this circuit. It just means that this relay coil uh, won't be so taxing on the 555. Um, I've added these two diodes because essentially this relay emulates the light switch and bridges the grey and yellow wire to the earth wire. So, and the two diodes just keep it separately. Then that brings the lights on. Um, so I've added two diodes to keep them separate, but effectively it grounds them um, together once the relay is activated. Otherwise you need the multipole relay. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is that I've put a diode for reverse polarity protection and also um, there is a, um, a decoupling capacitor and a, a resistor so any rapid changes in voltage on the supply side um, that decouples it a bit more it's like a low pass filter and if the relay switches here for instance it doesn't influence directly the supply um, on the 555 of course the relay coil has a diode across it since um, when the relay turns on and off there's a nasty voltage spike which could potentially damage the 555 chip so don't forget to put that diode in not many people use them these days anymore but uh, i think they're very handy little chips this is used 
in a very, very odd way. Um, uh, you wouldn't think of using a 555 as a light sensor and a relay driver, but it, it works really well and the component count is extremely low. Yeah, so that's my little uh, uh, light circuit. This, this uh, LDR, um, what we can do is we could put this on the dash somewhere. Uh, so it picks up the ambient light and uh, this will be wired up to the connector that goes behind the uh, light switch. We'll just tap into the wires there and uh, we'll pick up the supply which has to be an ignition supply so that um, when you turn the uh, ignition switch or the car off the lights just turn off as well because this circuit will then be disabled. Um, one thing that I haven't included in this diagram is uh, we'll have to add a little uh, switch to just uh, disconnect this circuit and that'll disable the automatic lights and uh, I'll have to drill a hole in the dashboard somewhere to add that little switch because it doesn't look like uh, you can get a light switch for the Vauxhall Tigra that has automatic light function so we'll just add our own little separate switch for that. So I started by taking the 555 timer and uh, sticking it in the center of a piece of perf board, a uh, prototyping board. And the idea was that I lay the components out almost exactly uh, the same way as my um, circuit diagram was because there's no space constraints so it keeps it nice and simple. While soldering in the 555 chip, I started linking out the pins that were bridged together um, by blobbing solder onto the pads. I quite like how on perf board you can create your own tracks just by simply blotching solder onto the pads. This is a very cool technique for prototyping and uh, it prevents, it saves you from um, having to etch your own board and you can have something finished relatively quickly. After completing the board I decided to use one of these um, terminal block boxes as the enclosure to place the board in. So that's it all completed in its box. I've decided to add a 3 amp inline fuse for the ignition supply which is um, also passes through a switch which will be the auto enable or disable for the lights. So that switch just breaks this ignition supply to this fuse. It would have been better if this 50k pot was a 20k trim pot. That would have given us more precision. But it works just fine. These two orange wires, they connect to the um, grey and yellow, which uh, if grounded via the relay and the diodes, uh, brings the lights on. Uh, so that goes to the light switch and um, the ground wire just goes to the negative uh, of the cigarette lighter and um, then there's uh, two uh, wires that go to the uh, on the dashboard where the LDR sensor will be fitted. So I think we should proceed and uh, mount this in the car. So to remove the light switch we need to coax the button off by wedging it out with a screwdriver and just gently tugging it off. Then what we need to do, there's two little clips on the side that the screwdriver fits in, little metal clips, and you can just sort of push them to the side and hook the screwdriver in there, and the other side as well. And that, in theory, should release the switch. Below the light switch, there's a storage compartment which easily pops out with a screwdriver and then um, that allows you access to the wiring behind the switch. There's clips that can be released um, and it allows you the whole uh, plug to, to unclip from the back and then you can get to the wiring. At the back of the connector there's a black cover which you can unclip with a screwdriver and then it just pops off. Then if you get a small screwdriver you can force the connector to slide out. It slides out quite easily, just pry it out. So we need wire numbers number one, four and five. One is ground, four and five are the light wires and if they're linked to number one, the ground, then the lights come on. So we need to remove the insulation from these wires so we can solder onto them.
Once I've soldered three wires onto them, I'll give them a generous wrap of insulation to protect them and then tightly wrap the loom back together so it all looks nice and neat. So the next thing we have to do is uh, fish this bit of flex um, from the back of this panel connect when it's connected to the cigarette lighter. I'll use my trusty coat hanger, that's a stiff bit of wire, and um, we'll poke it through so it comes out the bottom there somewhere. Um, it's then easy if we undo this panel here with the screws, there's a screw there and a screw there. Um, we can then grab the wire and pull it across or even use the coat hanger if we need to to get it more or less to here where the light switch is. This little panel here also comes out, gives us extra access. That's where we'll um, attach our control PCB box. It's easy to access if we need to adjust, make some adjustments to the potentiometer. So yeah, so our flex will come out here. And also we need to fish from the dashboard, we need to fish um, the LDR light sensor, we need to fish it back down to here as well. So to power the entire circuit, if you just tug on this little panel for the cigarette lighter, then behind there we have a convenient uh, 12 volt supply, which is fed by the ignition switch. Um, so I believe the brown is the negative and the black is the positive. And we can use that to power our um, automatic light circuit. So, so strip back the insulation, solder on the wires, give it a good wrap of insulation tape, and then we'll pop the cover back in. And it'll be like we've never even been there in the first place. I think in order to get this LDR from the dash, this wire fished through, um, the easiest thing to do is to pull this bit of trim off here. And that gives us access to lay the cable in there. And then just in there, we can poke a coat hanger through so we can get the LDR to sit in the corner there. And we can put a screwdriver in there to push the dash apart slightly just to tuck the cable down there and poke down there, fish it out here, and then we can end in here with the control boxes. And then, then we'll have our LDR sitting on the dashboard to sense the light. So now we need to drill a hole for the little switch that disables the automatic lights. I think in here on the dash next to the light switch is a good location for it. And the good thing about these switches is you just drill a round hole and you just push the switch in and the little clips on the side snap the switch in place and it covers the hole nicely. It looks really professional. I used one of these cone shaped drills which gives you control. The deeper you go the bigger the hole becomes so you just periodically check and then you can precisely control the size of the hole until the switch fits nice and snug. The switch is wired in such a way that it just effectively breaks the red wire coming from our cigarette lighter ignition supply. And finally, it's just a matter of wiring everything to the control box. Our LDR wires, which is the grey with the um, black stripe, and uh, our ignition supply wires, um, which is a negative and positive and the uh, gray, yellow and brown which is um, the light switch wires and the brown is obviously a negative so we have two negatives we could just join them together and um, that's it and all that's left to do now is to show you a test so we can block out the light on the dash sensor by using an ultra high tech method of a sock attached to the end of a stick and this simulates night time and as you can see the lights come on each time we block out the sensor so it works just perfectly I'm quite happy with the result so let's do a test in the real world and see if it works at night time so let's start up the car and see if the automatic lights come on there we go works a treat 
and now of course you won't have a flat battery because the moment you turn off the ignition the lights turn off there we go job done well that was it for this video uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and um, leave a message in the comment if uh, if you guys think I should make more videos about uh, modifications done to my car or anything else that you think will make an interesting video um, I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you guys will join me on the next one see you later